Are you sad? Depressed? Sick of life? Come to the second happiest country on earth and watch all your problems fade away. Hello my people, today we're talking about how to study in Denmark. I would like to take a moment to thank Paula for requesting this video in the Germany episode. She left us this comment and now there's this video. You people impact the future. If you've got an idea for a video, please leave it in the comments below. Let us know what you want to see and we will make it for you. Then make sure you smash the subscribe button and join the road to 1 billion subscribers so that you can see your video when it comes out. Seriously folks, Denmark is an amazing option as a country. Over half of the international students that graduate in Denmark decide to stay in Denmark. Something that we talked about very recently in that short episode about the Canada update. But before you can stay in Denmark, you're going to have to graduate. So how does it work? Well, like most European countries, you're going to need to spend three years in university to graduate with a bachelor's degree, although you may need an extra semester or two if you choose a more practical applied sciences route. Danish universities start their academic year on September 1st. That means that your deadlines for international students have already passed. March 15th is the deadline for international students who do not have a Danish high school diploma. People with Danish credentials can, however, apply all the way into July. So yeah, it's a little bit too late for 2021 admissions if you're an international student, but it's a great time to start planning your 2022 process. If you need help with that, check out prepwithscore.com and see what we can do for you. The earlier you start, the more likely you are to succeed. So let's see how to succeed. How do you get admitted to a Danish university? Let's go to the prereqs. On a lot of Danish websites, I kept running into this term, qualifying entry examination, and it got me thinking about the bow and the horrors of that ugh, system in Spain. This entry examination is referring to the final exams of various high school systems, like the IB final exams, or the baccalaureate exams that you might take in countries like Germany or Spain or Italy. Denmark uses those grades from those exams to convert them into the Danish scale, and then uses those numbers to determine who is eligible for admission. If you don't have a degree from a European country or from Denmark itself, you can also use the International Baccalaureate, the IGCSE, and even an American high school diploma if you've taken some AP courses. What about the rest of us? If you don't have one of the credentials that Denmark accepts, then you've got two choices. One of those is to do a year of university in your country and take certain courses that they consider prerequisites for the program that you want to apply to, or the other option is to basically go do that in Denmark. See, instead of the foundation year programs that we often see, you can take a summer course that has just the courses that you need to be admitted. This is called conditional admission. So with conditional admission, you just show up a little bit early, knock out the courses that you need, and then you're admitted to the new program. Now, if you're looking for programs to study in Denmark, you're probably going to be looking for programs in English. There's a great website that has all the programs available, including links to each university's website and requirements and costs. Everything's there. What's that website called? This is becoming a weekly segment where I try to pronounce something that I have no idea how to pronounce and I did not put any effort into learning how to pronounce. So here's my best bet. The Bjornog Underwinningsministeriet. Yeah, just go there. Uh, UG.dk. You'll need to make an account on Optigelze. Optigelze is basically Denmark's version of Universe Italy or the Common App. It's a central portal for applications for universities in Denmark. From there, you just have to follow the university requirements and submit any documents that they ask for, and you're good to go. But you will have to get over the language barrier. So let's go there next. <laughs> Denmark is one of those awesome European countries where basically everybody speaks English. They even make this point explicit in their wonderful survival guide. That survival guide also includes wonderful nuggets like the fact that even though Denmark Danes tend to wear a lot of black, they're not goth. So due to the country's high English level, they're going to expect the same from you. And that means that you're going to have to match their English B level. Now that means you can use your English courses from the International Baccalaureate or any of the other aforementioned programs like IGCSE. However, if you don't have any of those, your next option is to take the TOEFL or the IELTS. The country has a single standard for everyone. 6.5 on the IELTS is equivalent to this English B level and an 83 on the TOEFL is also equivalent. Of course, some universities may insist that you have a slightly higher level 
if they feel that their program is exceptionally rigorous in English. Now, if you decide to study in Danish, ah, may the Lord have mercy on your soul. You're going to need to take the Studieproven in Dansk som Sprog or the study test in Danish as a second language. Good luck! If you're just interested in picking up a little bit of Danish while you study in Denmark, every university has free courses for foreigners. It's pretty cool that they give you the option to pick up their local language for free. Overall, the language barrier in Denmark is minimal. I would rate it as one Lego out of five. I miss Legos. I used to love Legos. I used to play with Legos all the time. All right, let's talk about money. So good news and bad news. Good news is it's Europe, so it's not that expensive. Bad news is it's Denmark. It's kind of more expensive than the other countries we've talked about so far. Now, if you have a European passport, it is completely free to study in Denmark. But if you don't, you're gonna pay between six and 16,000 euros a year. But there are some affordable options in the country, so don't discard the country just yet. There's also a government-sponsored scholarship that you can apply for, just like we talked about in the Netherlands video. The government gives the scholarship directly to the universities, and so each university decides how they're going to use it. Not every university gets a certain number of scholarships. So you do have to do your research, but those scholarships could pay for some or even all of your studies. As we know, tuition is just half the battle. What about the cost of living? The cost of living in Denmark is about a thousand euros a month, but the country does go out of its way to sort of help students to reduce their costs. For one thing, if you're a Danish citizen, they literally will give you money to go to university. It's free and they pay you. But for the rest of us, we're not gonna get free money. So what do they do to make it up to us? They have a card called the ISIC and the ISIC is a student ID card that also comes with an app that gives you tons of discounts on everyday stuff. Like no joke, some of these are pretty sweet. Discounts on student housing? Denmark literally gives you discounts to get cheap video games if you study in Denmark. Like what other country helps you buy video games? And if that's not enough, they even have discounts that work in other countries. Like being a student in Denmark gets you free stuff in Australia, what? What? So yeah. Denmark's not the cheapest option in Europe by any means. In fact, it's one of the more expensive options that we've found so far. However, they do try to make it easy on you. They say money can't buy happiness, but maybe it can buy you some in Denmark. Of course, if you want to enjoy that happy lifestyle, you're going to need a visa. Denmark's visa process is arguably the simplest one that we've found so far, and it's extremely straightforward, and their website is just so wonderfully designed and transparent. Man, we could learn a thing or two from these people. Just like every other student visa we've covered, you first need to get admitted into a university. Once you've done that, you're going to need to show that you have enough money to survive in Denmark. Now, Denmark doesn't actually use the euro, so they ask you to show 6,321 kroner a month, which is about $1,000. The only other thing that they ask you to provide is biometric information like your fingerprints and probably some like, I don't know, eyeball scans, like Mission Impossible stuff. I don't know, they wouldn't tell me. Anyway, you can get all that done at a local embassy office. If you don't have a Danish embassy in your country, see if you have a Norwegian embassy. Denmark and Norway are like this, and they've partnered up to make it easier for people to do their paperwork. So if you're in a country with a Norwegian embassy, but not a Danish embassy, you can use that one or vice versa. Now you will have to pay a rather expensive visa fee of $325, oh, that hurts. And then fill out the online S1 form. But once you do all that stuff and submit your paperwork, you should get your visa relatively quickly. And that's it, you go to the embassy, pick up your visa, go to Denmark, study for three years, live happily ever after in one of the happiest countries on earth. That's all you need to know to study in Denmark, my people. Thank you for checking us out. If you found this information helpful and it gave you some ideas for your future, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get to 1 billion subscribers before anybody else does, and you can make it happen. I also would love to know where you guys are from. Like, if you guys want to tell me where you're from down in the comments, that would be super cool, because like, I see some people watching videos at like 2 or 3 in the morning, and I know we're not good enough for insomnia material, so I assume it's just a different time zone. I've also seen like people using subtitles in Arabic. Who are you people? Say hello. I want to meet you people. If you need help with your application and you want to study in Denmark, then you know where to go. Prepwithscore.com. 
Check us out on Instagram also, at PrepWithScore, because we want to talk to you and find out how we can help you to reach your goals. This is the part of the video where I would totally tease whatever's coming up next week, but it's just so amazingly awesome that I can't tell you about it yet. So the only solution is for you to subscribe and stick around and come back here next Thursday. I'll see you then.